and welcome to our May edition of Sports Highlights. Glad you're with us. My name is Greg Bickavaris. Our program airs on TV on Mondays at 7 a.m., 2 p.m., and 7 p.m. Weekends at 9 a.m. on Cox Cable 47, Fio 17, and NPSTV.com, and all over social media, including YouTube. This is our May show, and it is a pure pleasure to talk to the state championship team from Woodside High School and boys basketball. Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Very nice. Let's start off with Stefan Welsh. We also have Trevor Smith and Saquon Welsh as well. Trevor and, of course, Saquon are both seniors. Stefan went to Woodside High School and is now the head coach. And uh, a dream come true. You coach at your high school. You were just like these kids way back in the day. And now you, you lead the young men. How was that opportunity and experience? Um, I think it was kind of surreal. You know, when you set out to set goals and and try to achieve them, you know, you never really know how long it's going to take, but, you know, you have faith that through hard work you'll eventually get there. And I think when I first got the job, these guys were in sixth grade. They actually played on my first junior future league team. And so, you know, over the last six years, they've grind, they've worked, you know, it's been endless, endless hours, you know, preseason work outside, pushing sleds and, you know, they they probably run hundreds of miles. It probably feel like to them, and you know, endless weight room sessions. You know, endless individual skill instruction sessions. You know, and and you know even you know to their testament, you know they 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 trusted the process. It didn't work year one. You know, then we get COVID. You know, year two, and then you know year three. You know, we blow a twenty point lead in the third quarter to Maury. You know, a game that we have full control over you know, for a chance to, you know, play in the state. Um, and then it's, in Trevor's case, he had some of everybody trying to pull him from us, you know, all, all every every private, you know, school that you could think of. And, you know, he wanted to stay at home and try to win the state championship. You know, I think that, you know, once we kept our core intact, um, we went, you know, through this off season with a sense of purpose. You know, I knew um, last April, that we were going to win a state championship. It was no doubt in my mind. As long as we stay healthy, um, these guys have been through it. They they've had it. They they had had a chance to taste success, and they've had it. They had had a chance to taste failure. You know, it was no doubt in my mind that, you know, this this March we 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 we'll, we would be crowned state champions. And you've known the grind since you've been a kid. I've known you since you've been a kid, working hard. You played for Coach Richardson, who was always full court pressure, that type stuff. He also was an assistant coach at Virginia Tech and Old Dominion. You played at the highest level at SEC. There was no jokes around. You were all business. There are times that you went home at night and watched film yourself. You never stopped working. Right. No, and that's kind of what I try to pass down to these guys. You know, I know that a lot of the things we do is very repetitive. And, you know, for example, you know, every August they know, they probably don't look forward to it, but starting August 1st, we work out from 10 a.m. in the morning to 4 in the afternoon, every day of August. Um, and it's, it's real work. And, you know, it's more so it really works your mind. But if we get through August, then we can get through anything. You know, and like I said, these guys, they, you know, this particular August, it won't no moan, it won't no complaining. It was all, hey, I'm gonna get through it. I know what they expect. I know where, where, where this could take us. And, you know, I felt the sense of pur purpose. You know, I felt the sense of, we gotta get back. You know, I felt the sense of, we gonna do it this time. They did it. Absolutely. Saquon, of course, uh, we televised three of your games. What did you enjoy the most about your senior year this past year? Winning the state championship. Yeah. Uh, that was the goal since I was a freshman, but we didn't quite get there. It took some time, but we knew as a team that this year that that's what we wanted. Kept our heads. Mm -hmm. Took some early losses, but we never, we never had a doubt that we were gonna that we that we weren't going to win the state championship. Yeah, Trevor, it looked like a totally different team from the time we televised your Menchville game at Menchville to the postseason. You guys really grew from the first quarter of the year. Talk about the evolving. All right, we just uh, stuck to it, uh, just continue to work. Um, and that's going back to like scouting and improving and just building bond with all the guys and trusting each other. 
Yeah, it's so important too, Stefan, that everybody stays focused, you know, brotherhood, teamwork, you know, that type of thing. There's so many um, distractions now. The phone was not a big deal when you were in school as, as it is now. Social media was really not relevant, but uh, all it was was basketball. Talk about some of the places when you were a kid, because I know you didn't always have a net to play on. Right. Some of the places that you played as a kid that helped develop you as a coach. Well, you know, it's funny you bring that up, two things about the cell phone. So, you know, we get we get into, you know, the, the, the thick of our season there. You know, I take cell phones. First thing in the morning, we got a cell phone box. Everybody got to turn their cell phones in. They don't get them back until after practice. And I think, you know, we do that for a sense of, number one, you know, in class we don't want no distractions. You know, I give my guys grades every Thursday. That's, that's definitely priority number one. You know, it, it's my worst fear that, you know, we'll have a college come in and see a kid and then they like them as a talent, but they can't take them be because of, you know, the grades. So um, I think, you know, that's one of the staples of our program once the season starts is, you know, these guys give up their cell phones at, you know, 6.30 in the morning and they don't get them back until, you know, at the practice, you know, mm -hmm. 4.30. So, you know, once those guys bought into that, I'm like, yeah, this group is special. Yeah. You know, we all, me included, you know, we love our cell phones. You know, that's just, you know, the, the, the way that the world is today. Um, and then another thing that we do is, um, for the last three years, I think, Antoine Bethea had his, you know, Bethea Family Foundation outdoor tournament and, you know, I make all my guys play an outdoor tournament as a team and, you know, we play, you know, um, teams from other states. Mm -hmm. um, last year, we lost in the championship to a team from New Jersey. They actually beat us twice. This year, you know, the same team beat us the first time and then we beat them twice after that. And again, that's just you know, a testament to these guys, and that's where I saw growth. Um, very, very talented team from, you know, Newark, New Jersey, play really, really hard, which they're used to playing outside of there more so than we are. Um, but even then, I saw the grit and fight in my guys, and I'm like, they got the grit and fight to overcome. Um, there was no doubt in my mind that any type of adversity that we would see, you know, throughout the upcoming season that we'll be able to overcome it. And it is adversity, too, because when you're playing basketball, it's not like football. They can hide behind the helmets. They're far away from the field. You know, you played football as well. Basketball, the crowd is right there front and center. And you didn't guys didn't sit around at home waiting for Santa Claus. You guys played Gonzaga. How was that experience? Uh, that was a great experience. Uh, I think that was the best game we ever played. We went into that game locked in. Like, we, we wanted to beat them. Um, I don't even think we played like that in the state championship game, mm -hmm. to be honest. That was, that was a fun experience. Yeah, talk about the arena that you played in and what did you enjoy about it the most against Gonzaga? It was a great game. Uh, we fought and we was hungry. Uh, yeah. We knew we had something to prove and a lot of people slept on us um, after them early losses. And it was, it, was, it was a great experience. Yeah, and the good thing about basketball is you have time to grow as a team from the fall till March. And by the time, you know, March was coming around, y'all were clicking. It's almost like... When we did your game at Denby in the postseason, that was against Princess Anne, correct? It's almost like they started off a little bit with y'all, and you could say, you know, come into our web, and you got it. Once you get them that spider web, uh, no pun intended, because I know you're going to Richmond, uh, you got them right exactly where you uh, It was the confidence. You could see the confidence, Stefan. Absolutely. You know what? I think that right before we played um, Gonzaga, we had lost at home to Kickatan, um, I believe, on that Friday. Um, and I never had a doubt even after that game that, okay, we're going to play the number five team in America. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've, they've beat some really, really good schools. Mm -hmm. But when I was watching film, I'm like, we match up with them really well. Um, and I, I could sense after we, you know, took the ride up there, we just had a sense of calm to us. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like the kick tan game never happened. Mm -hmm. You know, then in, in walking in, into the University of Maryland, the X Xfinity Center, obviously they at home, you know, they're the number one team in the Washington Post. You know, I think they had just come off being like Roswell Catholic um, and another powerhouse from New Jersey, you know, really good yeah. wins. Even still, you know, we had a sense of calm to us. And... I remember one of, the, one, of, one of the Nike scouts up there, his name Van Johnson, like a mentor to me, he said, if you could weather their, 
their storm those first four minutes, y'all gonna have a chance to win the game. And I told him if, if they can weather our storm the first four minutes, then they can win the game. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, a little reverse psychology. Yeah, so, and that's the way we carried it. Obviously, with those guys being the number, top, number five team in the country, they had a sense of pizzazz to them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and I, looked, I looked in my guys' eyes and I knew, I'm like, we really gonna win this basketball yeah, game. Yeah. Um, so they came out, and we both came out punching each other, punching each other, punching each other. But as the game, you know, went on, um, I thought our defense was solid throughout, and we were getting them into a lot of late shot clock situations. Mm-hmm. You know, and I knew, you know, obviously when you're playing with a shot clock, um, you, you manage the game differently. Um, I, have, I, do, I do have experience coaching under the shot clock, so I felt like, okay, we go into the fourth quarter, and this is a four-point game either way. I feel like I can manage the game enough to beat these guys, and, you know, these guys did it. You How know? long was the shot clock? Uh, 30 seconds. Yeah. You know, a lot of their points were coming, you know, under, under, you know, six seconds within the shot clock. So we were playing sound defense for, you know, 24 to 26 seconds every time down mm-hmm. the floor. And then the, the shots that they were taking, they were all contested shots. I think that's when I knew it really hit me, like, all right, the kick and tan loss really don't matter. Like, mm-hmm. like this, is, this, this is the basketball team that, you know, that we, that we want to be. Right. Um, and I knew from that point on, all we had to do was maintain and stay healthy and then just put ourselves in a position um, when it came playoff time, just, 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 going to playoff, just going to playoff time healthy. And I knew it would be a tough out. Yeah, you guys, you know, you talk about Christian Greenlaw. And you guys helped Jacoby Reed a lot, too, because he was a good outside shooter, but he needed confidence. He got a lot of the confidence from you. But talk about uh, Silas Marksdale and how he helped your team as the year went on. Um, Silas was a, a key piece to our team, especially the beginning of the season. You know, Christian was just coming back from football, mm-hmm. so he was still trying to find his groove. Um, but that's what we had Silas for. He was always on the boards, always helping us when we got beat on defense. Um, in the post, uh, he's, he might be one of the best passers on the team out of the post. Right. Um, Silas was just, he was the glue to our team. Right. And Trevor, you guys were a total team, not just the players that started, but the bench players, too. Talk about that brotherhood. Right. So you got like, all right, we got like Travis, um, Saquon, Michael. Uh, so we, we pretty deep. Um, we just trust one another. But we really got like 10 starters, I believe. So um, we just deeper than other guys. So when we go into games, say I'm not having a good game, uh, somebody else can pick it up. Um, Mm-hmm. We just got each other back. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we talked to Stefan when he won the state championship back in the day when he played there, and now, of course, he's the head coach. These are the state champions right here, part of the team, of course, with us Stefan Welsh, Trevor Smith, and, of course, Saquon Welsh. Of course, we have Dickie Van Dyke coming up in the next segment. How many celebrations have you had since uh, you cut down the nets in Richmond? <laughs> too, uh, too many to even remember. Yeah. You know, I think the city, I, first of all, I would like to thank, you know, the mayor, the vice mayor, city council, mm-hmm. you know, for the things that they've done to help bring, you know, recognition, not just to us winning, you know, the state championship, but, you know, the, being a positive influence on the city and the school system, you know, for some of the things that, you know, have gone wrong. You know, we, we, we were able to be a positive influence and to get a city something to rally around um, to show that, you know, Newport News is a city of champions. Um, and I, I, I mean, I, I like that for our guys. You know, we, we definitely for our school system. You know, every, nobody's you know, in denial about, you know, some of the things that have gone wrong. But at the same time, I think we, you know, we were able to show people that, you know, that's not truly what Newport News Public Schools is all about. You know, yeah. we, 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 we have the resources in place, you know, to, to, you know, not just for basketball, but for, you know, um, other programs to, 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 you know, achieve, overcome um, on, a, on a state level. And one thing about your teams, you don't just wait and treat one quarter differently. You treat all four quarters the same. Even when you have the second or third team in there, you're still grinding. And a lot of the players get that confidence from you. Is that correct? correct. You see the coach grinding. You're still, you're wanting to grind. Right. Is so, that true? All right. So, yeah. like, we just feed off his energy. Yeah. Um, Sometimes I feel like he on the court with us, um, but like when it, like you know how first half we play defense like on our side of the bench, 
-hmm. Second half is swap, so it's kind of like a downhill a little bit. So we have we be having to communicate more and talk more and be more sense sense the urgency. You'll be going to Richmond, right? And of course, you'll be going to Bluefield, correct? Yes, sir. What state? Um, it's in West Virginia. Very good. So not too far away either. And so. All the best, my friends. Uh, state champions, you know, we'll be celebrating this the entire month of May on TV and on the internet. Uh, thank you for your time, your talent, your treasure. It was a pure pleasure to televise three of your games. I know it was uh, not only great to win in the postseason, but to beat the teams in Newport News, beat the teams in Hampton, beat the teams in Maryland. You took care of business, and you're already looking forward to next season already. Absolutely. You know, obviously, we're losing Trevor, we're losing San Christian. Um, we had a, we have a really really good group of you know rising freshmen. I mean we got you know seven of, of our of our nine man rotation coming back. Obviously Christian played well for us down mm -hmm. the stretch. Didn't play a lot during the year because he was trying to get himself back in shape. But I mean we got a lot. We probably have more depth next year. I'm definitely looking forward to you know piecing the puzzle together and. You know, figuring out you know what makes this team go. But one one thing for sure, two things for sure: we're gonna play hard. We're gonna play for 32 minutes, and uh, we're gonna win basketball games. You're ready to play right now, right, right now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, all right. Well, stay tuned for our next uh, guest, Dickie Van Dyke, assistant football coach at Phoebus High School, formerly at Warwick High School. Guys, thank you all the best this summer. Thanks for having me. Very us. good, Appreciate my you. pleasure. All right, stay tuned as our May show rolls on. Watching NNPS TV. Catch sports highlights on Mondays at 7, 2, and 7, and on Saturdays and Sundays at 9 a.m. Visit us online at NNPSTV.com to view all your favorite episodes. NNPS TV, watching education happen. And welcome to our second segment of the May edition of Sports Highlights, our program since February of 1992 in the studio. Glad you're with us. Hope you enjoyed the nice Woodside segment, the state championship basketball team. Now let's welcome our next guest, Dick Van Dyke, assistant football coach at Phoebus High School, former Wark assistant football coach. In fact, in our first game ever in 1991, he was on the staff with Bill Lyons when Wark took on Kickatan right there at Todd Stadium. i got to ask you this. In the course of a week, and you said, I'm Dick Van Dyke. You know, how many comments do you get about the old TV show? Oh, about 50% of the people. <laughs> like, uh, I even, I even kind of demonstrate I practice tripping over that little ottoman that Dick Van Dyke tripped over. So, so I, I got to have good balance because I practice it. <laughs> and you've got a great sense of humor, so you play right into it. Yeah, I do. I how do. many times have you, have you heard this? Oh, really? You are Dick Van Dyke? Daily. Daily. <laughs> so Daily. It's a, even now. Yeah. Not, even now. Not as much, but even now because Dick Van Dyke is not. You know, this younger crowd coming up. And, right. But still, even now, Mary Poppins. <laughs> right. People, but people over 40 remember them, though. Right, right. But uh, let's talk about your career and coaching. Of course, you've been at Warwick High School and, of course, at Phoebus forever. And, um, you know, there's a lot of coaches like you and Coach Narvid, Bob Sislo, that were lifelong assistants that uh, sometimes didn't push the level to become a head coach, where I'm sure you thought about it sometime during that duration. Well, I'm a real, I, you know, I've been around long enough. I've never had that desire to mm -hmm. go up yeah. to, to take that. I'm a, I'm a good assistant. Right. I, I do what I'm told to do. I, I, I do it 100%. But, see, I did baseball, too, at Warwick and at Phoebus. But to be a varsity head coach 
if you do your students right, you need to be in the building. Mm -hmm. You need to be in the building because the education, making sure they got the grades right, all that stuff just makes you eligible to participate in all the extracurricular sports that's out, that there's out there that everybody wants to partake. So I've never wanted to because I, I have a good job over in Norfolk. I work for an engineering firm over there. And at the time I came in, the teacher pay wasn't comparable. Because mm -hmm. I've, I've even had uh, Mr. Harvey mm -hmm. and Joe, jo, jo, Coach Taylor at HU mm -hmm. try to get me over. And the money they offered me, mm -hmm. it's not when I'm making an interview. So really, I'm here for the kids. Right, and the freedom and the, the independence, kids. too. When you're a head coach, you really it's about your time, talent, and treasure. But if there's a problem, like you said, being in the building, there's a problem with a grain or a discipline problem, right. the coach can go right down you, the hallway. You can handle it. When you're not in the building, right. it's difficult. I think that's why I've been coaching as long as I have, because the first eight hours of the day, I have a day job. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, not, I don't have to, I'm not dealing with all that yeah. during the day. You know, I get to the field, I'm gung-ho, I'm ready to go. And maybe that's made my longevity be what it is. <laughs> you know, you look back at your first couple of years at work, you know, back then John Quillen was coaching at Denby. He beat Hampton mm -hmm. in 89 uh, with um, several key players on that team. And then you were going up against Kaz at Bethel, who had won a couple state championships at that point. He won another one in uh, 92. Mike Smith had won several state championship teams in the 70s and the 80s. So, I mean, there was really, and you had Bill Lyons, you know, uh, the year prior to Mitchell was Coach Nuttycomb. So it was, and then, of course, Matt Boone was at Denby in the mid 80s, too. Right. There was a who's who among coaches when you were first coaching with Bill Lyons. Talk about that. Well, you still have Tommy. Yeah. Tommy was over at Ferguson <clears throat> when I was there. But you're right, it was Mike Smith and uh, Kaz over at Bethel. That was, they were kind of like, that was the measuring stick right there that you, you tried to get to that level mm -hmm. in order to compete in the Penessa District. And if you're, I mean, back in the day, if you could go nine and one in the Penessa District and not even make the playoffs. I mean, it, it, I, every week was a game that could go either way. The Penessa District was tough back in mm -hmm. then. had had a good, I think it was 96, Mitchell had a good team and the board went to, uh, Brown that went to UVA, they beat Fe I was at Phoebus, they beat Phoebus because my daughter graduated then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he, she says, sorry, Dad, uh, we had to beat you. So yeah. He, <laughs> well, you look at Kurt Houston's team, he had a 9-1 team at Heritage after he was at Kickatan. He didn't make the postseason. Right, that's 99. Yeah. That was 99 because we all three, Hampton, us, Phoebus, and, the, and Heritage all finished 9-1. Mm -hmm. But because the out-of-district opponent had more power points, Heritage didn't make the playoffs. Do you like the watered down now, Dickie, where you see several teams make it? I mean, Hampton made it this past fall with uh, you know a losing record. They still played work tough, but that would have never happened 20 years ago. Right? No, that, that, that wouldn't happen 20 years. Well, if you wanted to go back further, mm -hmm. if you weren't undefeated, you didn't play for a state championship. Mm -hmm. I remember 16. I remember, I remember uh, late 60s. Uh, might have been the last Nupa News game. Hampton was undefeated. Mm -hmm. Nupa News upset them. They were supposed to play Granby, I think, at the state mm -hmm. championship because only undefeated teams went to the state championship. Now it's down. Uh, we play teams from the western part of the state that's not even five five hundred maybe. Mm -hmm. And that's and uh, I haven't seen any injuries, but I think it's a little watered down. They could cut back on a little bit. You sustained so long at Phoebus. You were at work for three years, eighty nine, ninety, and ninety one, yes, and you dealt with Coach. Uh, you know, D forever. He had been the head coach there since 85. Talk about the late Bill D, a good story about him. He was always a grinder. It was not easy for him in the 80s, but his team's definitely involved in the 90s. Well, he, he was, he, he really preached the education. Uh, as do, as do, I've been there through three coaches now, and they all have had the same thing, homerooms, all that same weight room, off-season weight room. Um, he wasn't. He was more of. A, he was. He was a uh, black and blue football coach. Mm -hmm. He pan, pound and grind. Mm -hmm. You know, we have Taj Boyd in 2008, six, seven, and eight, and he still only passed 12, 14, 15 times, 15 on a big yeah. game. Yeah. And and but we had some running backs back in those mm -hmm. days. Yeah. So it's 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 really it's really progressed to where if it's a program. Okay, we won it four in a row, 
six, seven, eight, no, it wasn't, eight, nine, 10, and 11. Mm -hmm. All four of those teams had four different starting quarterbacks, four different starting running backs, and four different starting fullbacks, and they all went to play college football. Yeah, we did one of your games uh, against Woodside, you know, where Elon Lewis ran and ran and kept running, but uh, there was always an event when Phoebus played Hampton or Phoebus played Bethel when you first got there. There were always events, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you guys were the epitome of a good offense, a good defense, and good special teams, and you guys played. One thing about Coach D, a trademark, was he played for 48 minutes. Right, he, he played, yeah, he definitely played for 48 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. I can I can remember we played kick to him once. Mm -hmm. It was... Uh, Late, oh, second half, end of the first half, I think nine seconds to go, we're on the 20 yard line. He said, Let's kick it. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to kick it, I don't want to kick mm -hmm, it, I don't want to kick it. Mm -hmm. We kicked it, kicked the field goal, three nothing. Yeah. The final score was three to nothing. Mm. <laughs> the final score was three to nothing. And let's not forget Antoine Womack. Antoine Womack, you know, I saw something on Facebook today yeah. about who was the fastest running back in the Penelope District. And I see all these, some Phoebus guys, Talking about who should have been, the, who was the fastest running back, but I could see who's doing it. Nobody, none of them guys saw Antron Womack. Yep. Antron Womack was the fastest I've seen. And he played at Virginia, of course. And he played at UVA, right. For the late coach Welsh. And for a long time, he had the freshman, the most yards for freshmen at the University of Virginia for like. 15 years after he graduated. Yeah, uh, let's a talk about, uh, give advice to a person that wants to become an assistant football coach or even a referee. They're definitely needing referees. They're desperate for referees right now. Talk about somebody that wants to get into coaching. Some advice. Well, you know, I've been around a while, so I've seen a lot of new coaches come and go. And I think the hardest thing that the coaches today is are trying to get their self, get their feet wet. And, and just in high school is they experience Respect, respect at the beginning and don't want to earn it. You need to earn, you need to earn it. You, they got to believe in you as a person before they start listening to your instruction. Then you end up being like, I, I call it mom and daddy syndrome. Daddy could tell you something, but it, and then coach tell you the same thing 15 minutes later when he's talking to you, same thing, but he listened to coach, won't listen to daddy. Yeah. And, and if, the, if the coaches today would, would learn to earn the players and their athletes respect first, and it, into some progression as you get there, everything else falls in line. Dick Van Dyke, thank you so much for sharing some experience with us. Uh, congratulations on all the decades of great uh, wealth and experience you've had at work and at Phoebus both, and keep going uh, with Coach Blunt. Oh, I certainly appreciate it, Rick. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Dick Van Dyke right there, not the movie star, but uh, he's like a movie star among assistant football coaches in the Peninsula District, the assistant football coach at Phoebus High School. I want to thank all of our great guests from Woodside and Dick Van Dyke and our great crew here. We've got Regina Price here and Ray Price and all the great students and graduates as well for producing the May Show. For our great guests and Ray Price, I'm Greg Bicaveras. We'll talk to you soon.